And there have definitely been a few things of Sydney's that I believe could be improved on. Again, it's Tuesday, and again, it's time for another video. This person has been very heavily requested over the last probably about two months or so. Obviously, you've seen the title, so obviously you know who we're going to talk about, and that's Sydney Cummings. I haven't seen all of Sydney's content. I have seen a fair amount. I'm going to base my opinion on what I have seen. Due to not seeing everything, my opinion is subject to change in the future if I'm exposed to something that changes my opinion. And lastly, I'm not assessing Sydney as a person, I'm merely assessing her content. Sydney's dominant social media platform is YouTube, so most of this video will be focused on her YouTube, although we are going to take a quick dive at her Instagram. But before we do so, you know we have to do one thing. It happens every week, but I know the main reason people click on this video is probably for the puppy, yeah, maybe, but also because I wear a different piece of headwear every week and I'm actually running short. I just realized I only have a few left, so I need to buy some more hats. So today's headwear comes to you from Anna who requested I wear this. My head is too big for it. I've never worn this before and it makes my ears stick out so much and best bloody well enhance my hearing. It's called fashion, if you didn't know, and obviously I am many things, one of which is not a fashion icon, clearly. We're gonna look at Sydney's Instagram very quickly. Just have a quick gander. She has a lot of YouTube subscribers, apparently. I can confirm, I've checked, she does. She's also qualified. That's a big win for me. Personally, I prefer to get the majority of my information and resources from qualified individuals. She talks about 10 fitness myths and she busts them. Number one, you can't achieve life-changing goals with at-home fitness. Uh, I agree with her, you can. But again, that depends on your goals. For a lot of people whose primary goal is to essentially look better, feel better and be healthier, definitely achieve that at home. Everyone works out for physical or aesthetic benefits. Again, in the bin, a lot of people work out for the emotional and mental benefits. As you know, I preach mental health. It's a big thing, very important thing for me. And I know for many of you, it's important too. I find when I'm training and training is going well, mentally, I feel better. I feel happier. Training and just fitness is one of the elements of your life that you have direct control over the progress that you make. You can work as hard as you can at a job, but it doesn't guarantee you a promotion. When you're training, if you're putting in the effort and you're doing the bits and bobs outside of the gym or outside of the home workouts like the eating the sleeping and the hydrating etc and the resting the recovery that then in turn directly contributes to the fact that you are going to progress cardio is the best way to lose body fat again in the bin talk about long-term fat loss and the maintenance of fat loss i.e keeping the fat off cardio and resistance training combination of both is going to be pretty ideal if you could only choose one for long-term fat loss I personally would lean towards resistance training. Not only are you going to burn calories by doing resistance movements, the more muscle mass you have, the more calories you burn while at rest. The analogy I always use was a car. If you have a one litre car versus a six litre car, and they both want to travel the same distance, let's say 100 miles, the one litre car may use 10 pounds of petrol, whereas a six litre car may use 20 pounds of petrol. The distance is the same, but the engine is bigger. You will achieve the look or happiness you want by waiting for your body to hit a certain number on the scales. No, scale weight isn't always an accurate representation of progress. Personally, for a lot of people, I would always say focus on how you look and how you feel rather than what the scale is saying. When I say focus on how you look and how you feel, I mean you. I don't mean how you look in comparison to others. I mean how you look in, in comparison to yourself and where you were a week ago, a month ago, or a year ago. Progress isn't always going to be linear. You will hit plateaus. You will have setbacks. That's called being human. But the one thing I would always focus on is not quitting and not giving up because if you do so, you're never going to achieve your goals. A great man once said, it's you versus you. Look at this sausage. What's on my head? He says, what's in your head, Harry? What's in your, oh, do you want to wear the hat? Do you want to wear the hat? Oh, back to being the bridge. <gasps> okay. So I'll just do the video like this then. Very quickly, I know we're analyzing Sydney, but I've got to interrupt you just for 15 seconds, probably gonna be longer, sorry. If you do like the video, please let me know you like the video by dropping a like on the video. It does really help me, it helps the channel, it helps everything. If so, if we could hit 300 likes, I would really appreciate it. And if you haven't already, please could you consider clicking the red button down below and subscribing and potentially clicking the bell next to it to get notified when I upload every week. It means a lot to me, it helps the channel out massively and it's free to do so. And obviously at the end of the video, I'm gonna cover comment quest of the week in which I answer a question from the comment section of the previous week. So you have a question you want me to answer, drop it down in the comment section below and I shall do so. But now that's out of the way. I'm sorry, I hope you like my hat. We'll continue with the rest of the video. So now we're gonna look at Sydney's YouTube, which is her main social media platform. There are a few things I want to know about Sydney. She has a great story. 
So one of her YouTube videos is talking about her story, how she lost her brother, which is extremely sad and extremely unfortunate, and also about the journey she took to get to where she is. She's got a great sporting background and she's been through a lot. And she also strikes me as somebody who actually really cares. A lot of the videos I've seen always have quite a positive message at the end of them, which is great to see. And I think a lot of this positive mindset work probably comes from the struggle she's been through previously. She seems like a good egg. She posts every single day and she's consistent. Good signs, good signs. We're looking at a 50 minute butt and legs sculpt workout. Staggered stance hip thrust from what it seems. If you're looking at from a purely developmental standpoint, I believe that hip thrusts are going to be more beneficial for glute development than squats, and they're certainly gonna be more beneficial for glute development than cable kickbacks. This movement's actually a really good one. So especially when people were stuck doing their home workouts without much equipment over obviously the last year, leg slides for your hamstrings are like top tier stuff, I would say, because it's really hard to target your posterior chain without any equipment, essentially replicating a leg curl. A great movement, and it's really great to see her including movements like this in her workouts, because she's not neglecting posterior chain, and she's also accommodating people who may not actually not have access to any equipment. Probably a movement I don't really mention much when I talk about my preferred lower body movements, especially when you're looking at glute development, but I do think the step up is a great exercise. Don't get shy with box height. I've seen many an individual in the past do a step up on like a, a 12 inch box or so. If that's all you can manage, then that's great. But if you have the ability to go higher and take the range of motion further, I would definitely recommend doing so. If I am performing step ups, I always kind of shoot to get my knee angle at 90 degrees on the inside of the knee. That's very much depend on mobility allowances and flexibility. 40 minute full body compounds. For most gym based programs, I'm not really a fan of combination movements, but for these kind of workouts and home workouts, I do understand their place because if you're limited to equipment and you're trying to get a lot of work done in let's say an hour, and you also want to target multiple muscle groups while doing so, I do think the inclusion of combo movements like this it's fine, it's good. So far it's looking good. Like everything I've seen from Sydney, I'm like, absolutely yes. The only thing I would say is when she's doing this kind of like dumbbell clean movement, it does seem like the weight is carrying her a bit too much, i.e. on the eccentric portion, so the negative, like the way down, it's like the weight is doing that. She's not really controlling it. And because of that, it looks like her back tightness is kind of questionable. I would always try and maintain that tension throughout and control the movement. That's just my belief and my personal preference. The thing I want to kind of clarify is that regardless of how great a content creator may be, there will always be something to improve on. Nobody is perfect. Because as humans, I believe that we can always strive to be better. And for example, there are many aspects of me as an individual I need to continue working on. And there are also many aspects of my content I need to continue working on. One of the big things I'm trying to work on personally is maintaining a balanced argument throughout the creation of my content, despite any potential underlying biases either for or against the content I am essentially analyzing. So this is a 30 minute arm burner workout. The fact that she is including other muscle groups like the shoulders and the back, I like and I appreciate. I, I personally would think that a 30 minute bicep and tricep only workout might be a bit unnecessary for many. Not for everybody, just for many. Gonna be straight with you, dumbbell skull crushes, probably one of my favorite tricep movements. When it comes to arm development, a lot of people associate arm growth or development with the biceps. Triceps make up two thirds of your arm. If you do perform these movements and you are experiencing any elbow pain, if you come down to the forehead, can place a bit more pressure on the elbows due to the elbow positioning. And number two, you're also limiting range of motion a bit. I personally allow my hands to come slightly behind the head, like so. I've allowed a bit of shoulder roll and the elbows are a bit further back now. It feels a lot nicer on the elbows. It also feels a lot nicer on the triceps because you are getting that greater range of motion. The last thing we'll look at today is a 20 minute lower body stretch. Someone actually asked this in the comment section and they spoke about the importance of resting because they find it really hard to not train. You are likely going to the gym for a purpose. You're likely training or working out in whatever means that is for a purpose. That purpose is to progress. To progress, you have to recover. Resting is arguably just as important as training. If you don't recover, you're gonna plateau pretty quickly and in many cases, you may actually regress. If you do like staying active, on rest days, do something that is not strenuous and isn't really gonna tax the body too much and especially not the CNS, so central nervous system. Put together a 20, 30 minute mobility routine or stretching routine, plot that on your rest days, just to help with the recovery and to get you ready for the sessions ahead. In theory, you could train every day if you wanted to, but the intensity would have to accommodate that, i.e. be lower, and the volume would likely have to be lower too. But personally, I'd always lean towards having at least one rest day a week. But that's it, that's Sydney. 
To be honest, as a wrap up, extremely impressed with Sydney. Those who do like home workouts with a bit of equipment and who are looking to maybe build a bit of muscle and just be fitter and healthier and just live a better lifestyle, I think she's absolutely smashing it. I'm really impressed. Nobody is perfect and there have definitely been a few things of Sydney's that I believe could be improved on. Honestly, as a whole, I'm really impressed with Sydney. I think she's producing some great stuff from what I've seen. Granted, I haven't seen everything. Although I did have high expectations coming into this, Sydney has far exceeded those expectations and I really do think she is a great one to follow if her workouts align with your goals. But now that's done, it's obviously time for Comment Question of the Week. So Lisa started working out during the events of last year and was following Caroline's workout plans, but now asks, I want to start lifting, but my question is, where do I start? I.e. where do I go about finding a trainer either online or in person? It's always a gamble, it's trial and error. Testimonials, basically real client feedback is gonna be great. It's gonna be a real indication of what that person is like. You can inquire with many coaches, either online or in person, but it doesn't mean you have to commit to going with them. Quiz them, ask them questions, ask them about basic training guidelines and principles and see how they respond. Obviously you say that you want to develop more, put together like a list of like 10 questions you want to know. If red flags pop up, definitely worth questioning. You can always drop me a message on Instagram if you want some help putting together some potential questions to ask them, or if you want to let me know what they've said, I can let you know if anything strikes me as a red flag. It's always a tricky one. And it's always gonna be quite an anxiety provoking process due to the uncertainty. There is so much crap out there, but there's also a lot of good stuff out there as well and a lot of good trainers out there. Like anything, it takes time to go do your research and put in the graph to find somebody that you may best align with. But that's it, that's the video. As I said earlier in the video, if we could smash 300 likes, I'll be extremely happy. And uh, Truffle, the puppy, would also be extremely happy too. He did tell me, you just didn't hear it. It obviously lets me know that you like the videos and that means a lot to me. So I do appreciate you and I do appreciate all the support that you continue to show me every week. It really does baffle me that people can tolerate my waffle. And when I scroll through the comment section and 99% of the comments that's really positive and encouraging, not just towards me, but towards others within the community. It genuinely brings a smile to my face and I really can't express how much that means to me. When I wake up or if I check Instagram, I've got message requests or DMs from people saying that they enjoy the content or even just asking me questions about training, about anything. The fact that people value my opinion and what I have to say is genuinely overwhelming. I can't express how thankful I am for your support. I'll continue working on my content. I'll continue working on improving who I am as a person and who I am as a creator to hopefully provide even greater to benefit to those who do choose to watch my content. I said, if you haven't already, I would really appreciate if you did click the red button down below and subscribe and obviously click the bell next to it. Then you get notified when I upload every week at the same time, but that's not irrelevant. But it's nice to know that I've uploaded and then you can be Austin to commenting first on the videos because someone needs to challenge him. And also if you have a question you want me to answer at the end of the next video, Drop a comment down in the comment question of the week and I shall do so. Regardless of whether you agree or disagree with my opinion, I'd love to hear your thoughts in the comment section. And I do really appreciate you taking the time out of your day to listen to my waffle. So thank you for tolerating the video.